Hi guys, it's Jay Deal here. If you're new to my channel, welcome and be sure to subscribe, share and like this video to help spread the truth and stop the mainstream media's bullshit and lies. Okay, so guys, today I want to talk about the monumental epic fail of the child abuse inquiry headed by the government into historic sex abuse claims. Now, I use historic very loosely because the fact is, to me, historic is ancient Egyptian time. Historic is not 10, 20, 30, 40 or 50 years ago. It's absolutely pathetic to give it that name and it discredits what's going on. The fact is this isn't historic. The fact is this is still going on now. This abuse is still going on now and this is a sham. So just to let you know guys, um, Theresa May got given this by David Cameron as you know a gift. You know you take this Theresa May and make it go away because David Cameron failed to do anything about this because as you know or may not know he's been involved in many pedo scandal cover-ups before when he worked for Carlton TV. He was known as the sleaze cover-upper. So what has happened is Dame Goddard, who is a New Zealand, who is from New Zealand and she's a high court judge, um, was put in this this very big position to head this inquiry by Theresa May. And I'm sure you will know that she was paid 360000 a year, had a 110000 a year rent allowance and was allowed eight first class fully expensive expensive expenses paid trips to New Zealand and Australia. So yeah, she had a pretty handsome package and was paid more than any civil servant in the history ever that we basically know of. You know, first of all, I want to talk about the fact what business did Theresa May have in appointing somebody who is not even from this country and doesn't even understand our proper legal system and legal framework and is an expert in this case was absolutely diabolical. Now, she, um, basically missed many um appointments missed many meetings does she really couldn't actually give two damn shits and she stepped down basically saying that you know you know and this this uh this um, inquiry has been, you know, plagued with failures and it's just too difficult. Now, I'm not sure why she stepped down, but all I know is that the establishment is very, probably very happy about this. The fact is this, she is now the third person to step down. The first person that Theresa May thought fit to actually, um, you know, put in this place was Fiona Wolf. Now, who is Fiona Wolf, guys? If you don't know, Fiona Wolf was a city lawyer who has no business in child protection and she was a friend of Leon Britton's. They lived on the same street together for many years. She gave Leon Britton's wife um, £50 for a fun run donation and they were just very good friends. They've got so many links, they've got letters, they were friends. Now if you don't know who Leon Britton is, Leon Britton was, he died in 2015, he was a paedophile and he attended allegedly Elm, Elm Street Guest House which was in the borough of Wandsworth, which was being, you know, advertised as a gay sauna house, a gay brothel, but in fact it was actually a cover-up for a horrendous child abuse, disgusting, horrible place where people would go to abuse young boys as young as six. Now, Liam Britton um, used to go there. So the fact is, why would Theresa May see fit to appoint this woman? Now, after much public pressure, they got rid of her and she eventually resigned and stepped down. I mean, the fact that we've got somebody in the establishment to protect the establishment is just uncanny and is disgusting. And it reminds me of politics, actually. It reminds me of the, um, the general election, how we have these three parties, these three people who have been cherry-picked and groomed from a young age, and they all represent different facets and different sides of the establishment and then we get the illusion of de democracy by voting for these you know idiots basically so that happened and then the second person who was appointed by the lovely Theresa May who has epically failed and is an unelected prime minister in this country um was a lady called um Baroness um I believe her last name to be Sloth um so Bar Baroness um she had to, she resigned and she also had to step down too. And you know why she resigned? Because of her brother. And guess who her brother was? Her brother was the general, um, a, a general um, secretary. He was a very high up magistrate. And his name was, his last name was Havering. I've just totally forgot his last name. And guess what he did? He was, um, 
he was their secretary general when all of this um, paedophile scandal was going on in the 80s when it was at its rife. And he basically stopped Jeffrey Dickens from using his parliamentary privilege to name Sir Peter Heyman as a paedophile. He whitewashed this and he protected Sir Peter Heyman. That was her brother. So she has got massive links to the establishment yet again. So she was urged to resign and she later stepped down and that's how we got Dan Goddard who hasn't really done anything she hasn't been to any meetings she's done absolutely nothing and she's realized that she can't do this job because this job involves you to have completely sold your soul and to know all the pedophiles now the reason why this absolutely disgusts me and makes me so angry is that Apparently, this report is going to come out in 2020. This is probably going to be, um, this is probably going to be like, you know, the Chilcot Inquiry, a complete and utter whitewash. The fact that it's coming out in 2020 is ridiculous. When the inquiry was set up in 2012, you know, it, it's ridiculous. And now papers are already saying that there's going to be long-term issues in looking back to allegations 60 years ago. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to scrap this operation by the fact that nobody wants to head this inquiry, but the fact people keep resigning and stepping down what they are doing is they're going to try and gain public support for saying look this inquiry isn't going to work it's going to cost 100 million pounds allegedly it's an absolute waste of money so why don't we just put laws in place to protect this from happening again instead of getting to the real crux of this this abuse this um scandal and this abuse was really instrumental by tom watson deputy Labour, um, Deputy Labour Prime Minister currently at the moment. Um, and he he was one of the ones, him and um, Danzig was one of the ones who blew the lid of this disgusting smoking gun because there were alleged documents, as you know, that were hidden and that were leaked. Now, what we are seeing is a continued cover-up cover on a monumental scale and purposely doing everything they can, MI6, MI5, the police, and God knows who else, to stop this from coming out because they are scared because this potentially has the lid, has the potential to blow the lid of the establishment. This is cross-party. This isn't involving just one party. This is cross-party. This is paedophile rings, you know, involving the upper echelons of society. And the first, one of the many questions I have is, one, it doesn't need to cost £100 million. Pounds. It's costing that much because you're paying people far too much and two why on earth aren't we getting somebody who's a social worker somebody who's done this how about oh i don't know maybe liz, liz davis who has personally campaigned for decades on institutional abuse and <laughs> institutional paedophile rings why don't we have her or why don't we have a social worker somebody who actually understands the system you know a whistleblower an activist why are we having these people who are part of the establishment and why the heck is Theresa May heading this? The fact is, this is a public inquiry and it needs to be, be done by members of the public and people who work in these professions, not lawyers, not city lawyers, not banneresses, no one with the first name of sir or lady or baroness. It's an absolute whitewash and it is disgusting. And we need to rise up and we need to complain about this. How do we do it? Well, we need to write to our local MP. We need to tell them how to disgusted we are we need to write to Theresa May we need to tell her how disgusted we are and we need to keep talking about it so we don't ever forget we need justice for these victims and this if this inquiry is is turning into a complete joke because this is what the establishment thinks of victims of this terrible abuse they think they're an absolute joke they're doing nothing about it the fact that harriet harman who was a member of the paedophile information exchange is still allowed in the labor party is an absolute disgrace the fact that dame margaret hodge is still allowed in the labor party and is a senior fellow is an absolute disgrace for some reason these people accept paedophilia they want to lower their age of consent and they have a dark and disgusting agenda. So what we have to do is we have to stay strong in our morals. We have to put pressure on our local MPs and we have to put pressure on the government because this isn't good enough. It is not good enough and it's a disgrace. Theresa May has, has been basically covering this up, is not doing what she's supposed to do and it's an utter disgrace and I think it's foul and we need justice for these victims so please let me know guys what you think below because as you start getting deeper into the story and it was it was like what i spoke about you know with them um, jeremy corbyn potentially being implicated in his um 
North Islington. This is cross party. This is an this is an absolute absolute monumental disgusting smoking gun and as you get into it you see that all these people know each other or knew each other and they're all protecting each other because they're all disgusting people so do let me know what you think in the comments below guys and thank you very much for watching and do be sure to subscribe and share this video and if you notice there is slightly less swearing to make them more shareable so go ahead and share this video and subscribe